Good day everyone. So we will now rationalize our answers for the clinical microscopy case study, specifically for the chemical parameter topic. So before we would read and answer the questions provided, we will first analyze, read, and comprehend the case study as well as the laboratory results. So we have a geriatric female patient which is 60 years old that is admitted to the medical center for a vaginal hysterectomy. So during the surgery, she is placed in an exaggerated lithotomy position for six hours because of surgical complications. Then she receives two units of packed red blood cells following surgery. Hematology, chemistry, and urinalysis routine tests are performed 24 hours after the intensive surgery. So, let us highlight the most important um, point here. So, I believe that would be the uh, exaggerated lithotomy position. Okay, so now let us evaluate each of the laboratory results. So we have three sections. First, we have the hematology. So the hemoglobin here is 15 grams per dl, and the hematocrit is 40%. So these are normal. Then we move to serum chemistry. We have the CK, myoglobin, and haptoglobin. So these three are elevated. Then for the urinalysis, so we have only physical and chemical. So for the physical, the color is brown. So when the color is brown, this has something to do with any disorder or pathologic disease. Clarity is clear. This is normal. Odor is also normal, which is slightly pungent. Then let's proceed to the chemical. So the specific gravity is 1.015. This is normal. pH is acidic. The blood is large, which is um, abnormal. Okay. Protein is trace, also abnormal. SSA, although this is not included in the urine dipstick. This is a separate test, no? But we still have to consider this since na siya sa ato ang laboratory results. So SSA, this is for protein, and the result is trace. Leukocyte esterase, nitrite, glucose, ketones, and bilirubin are negative, and the urobilinogen is normal. Now, let's proceed to the first question. What could be the cause of the color of the urine? Explain. So what do you think is the probable cause? So according to our lab result, the color of the urine is brown. So uh, when we look into the book of Strassinger, so the condition of having a brown urine or a red-brown urine, so we have myoglobin. RBCs oxidized to met hemoglobin and homogentisic acid. So among these three, red, brown, or brown, among these three, what we what would be the probable cause? So we would like to exclude homogentisic acid since this is present in alkaptonuria and this has nothing to do with the case or to the scenario. So we are now down to myoglobin and RBCs oxidized to methemoglobin. So which is which? If you would, uh, if you would like to analyze this case scenario, so 
as we have highlighted the exaggerated lithotomy position no so what would happen if the patient is um, positioned into a difficult position for long hours so first that would be that would be um, causing a pressure onto the muscle so that pressure in the muscle will create low blood flow so when you have low blood flow into your tissues specifically to the muscles there would be hypoxia then then if you have hypoxia in that area meaning there will be a damage to the tissue so uh, for this scenario this will be a damage to the muscle tissue and that if there will be damage to the muscle tissue it will now release myoglobin and this is cleared in the kidneys and this will be present in the urine so the correct answer will be myoglobin alright so the causative agent of the browning or for the color brown of the urine would be your myoglobin all right so uh, we will try to correlate um, the urine with blood or with myoglobin to its plasma so i don't know i correlate just to see if if um tugma bagyod siya when in terms to what is really secreted into the urine so all right correlation all right so assuming we have a red brown urine or a brown urine So, uh, if you have red urine, then you try to extract blood from the patient. Then you test the blood just by uh, putting it into a centrifuge. Then you check for its supernatant uh, on what is the appearance and color of your supernatant. If the supernatant is cloudy or if the plasma is cloudy, meaning there is hematuria or presence of RBCs. Now, if plasma is clear, then we'll divide this to two. If this is clear, we need to, to uh, describe its color. When it is having a red plasma so this means that there is hemoglobinuria red plasma means that the uh, heme component is liberated so na destroy na siya, then the heme is released so that heme is the um, responsible for the color no? so when it is released it will uh, stain the plasma and as well as the urine as red and we also have uh, still clear plasma this is indicative for myoglobinuria right i hope this is clear no right now let's proceed to question number two. What could be the cause of the result of the urinalysis chemical, uh, which is the lipstick blood parameter? Explain. So first, we need to determine what is the principle of the blood parameter. So that would be your pseudo peroxidase activity. 
of your hemoglobin. So that is the principle of the blood parameter for your lipstick. Alright, so since we have answered the causative agent for the color, so we would not assume nga hemoglobin siya, but we would assume that the cause will be your myoglobin. Alright, so myoglobin also has this pseudo peroxidase activity of hemoglobin. So uh, we do not assume nga if large or 4 plus ang blood sa uh, dipstick, it will really mean nga na eye bleeding or there is uh, hemolysis. No? So it might be there, is, there will be a, the presence of myoglobin. Alright. So, if you try to notice, no, ang result sa blood is large. So, it will really, it will really depend on the kanang kanang brand, no, or the manufacturer of your dipstick. So, uban uh, doesn't mean nga large large ang number or large ang something, but really, ang grading niya it will be small medium large then na i ranges ana nga uh, mo determine if small siya medium or large this it mean nga large ang cells no uh, mo depende siya sa range sa uh, volume nga yang na measure all right so other or most common kay ang semi quantitative That would be 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus, 4 plus. Uh, this is true for blood and ketone. Right, so the answer for the question number 2 is myoglobin. Alright. Number 3. What protein could be the cause of the protein result? So, I am referring to the protein result in the dipstick so let us first determine what is the principle of the protein parameter of your dipstick so the protein parameter has the principle of protein error of indicator So that's the principle for our protein parameter. So let us uh, explain this briefly. So you have a um, primarily the color of your pad is yellow, and then when this is added with your protein, uh, which is in the environment of acidic, then that protein will take up the hydrogen content of the pad and that hydrogen also is conjugated to a blue-green indicator. So that blue-green will appear if there is uptake of your hydrogen ion. Alright, so um, we already have the principle so what is the answer? No? Uh, according to the case scenario given, that protein is trace. So basically that, that question will just be rephrased nga unsay kind of protein nga specific for the dipstick. So the only protein or the only kind of protein that is um Measured specifically with the uh, urine dipstick is only the albumin and no other else. So, the correct answer is albumin. Then, we'll try to explain. We'll explain. So, as said, no, sa scenario, and as answered by questions 1 and 2, uh, there is liberation of myoglobin. And this is 
uh, being cleared by the kidneys. So, if taghan ang myoglobin content and um, ma-overload ang kidney so that uh, we have two tubules no, that is responsible for our uh, reabsorption process. That's your proximal and your distal tubules. So, if daghan na ang solutes that would pass through the tubules, so, um, dili na siya pili-pili, no? This has non-selective properties. When you say non-selective property, dili na siya mamili o kung sa solute niyang i-reabsorb. Uh, usually, albumin is reabsorbed man, normally. Normally. So, um, if there is uh, an overload with the function of the kidney, um, that would result to the release of albumin. And that's what it cost nga trace ang result of the albumin in the dipstick. So, there is small amounts of albumin that is released in the urine due to the overload of the kidney that is trying to uh, filter out or trying to uh, release the myoglobin. Alright. So, I hope this is clear now. Alright, alright. Next and the last question, what is the function of the SSA parameter? So, um, this is not usual sa routine laboratory, no? SSA, what we usually do sa laboratory, my God, is uh, we check for the physical. Then, after checking the physical, that would be the color, no? Color, clarity. Alright. Then, we proceed to the chem. So, dipstick. Usually, dipstick. So, ang dipstick would either be read through the naked eye or this will be read through the machine. So, that machine has the principle of reflectance spectrophotometer. That would read the uh, transmittance of light or the reflectance of light from the uh, individual pads of each parameter, slipstick. Alright. Then, routinely, um, last step will be the microscopic. So, this is done through um, creating a slide, no? And it's read with the naked eye. Ah, no, that's not naked eye. This is read through the microscope using the naked eye. Alright. And we also have a machine sa high-tech labs na, sa, especially with tertiary labs, nga high ang volume sa ilang um, testing for urinalysis. So, the machine will have the property of flow cytometry. We also have super a uh, high-tech machine nga both chemical and microscopic ang yahang ma-measure. So, when there is flagging, of course, the machine is not intelligent to to check with the cells, no? O na ba siya ay dagkong cast. So, the, that's the role of the medtech, no? Nga mutanaw. So, that's the time nga magamit ang machine sa iyahang um, Super HD nga camera. So, that uh, Medtech would choose. Mamili na lang ko, no? Mamili na kaasay cast. Unsa rin siya forma, waxy cast na siya. Or, um, epithelial cells, bacteria. Then, ikaw na mamili. Unsa i-picture sa machine. High-tech na kaayo. So, uh, I have experienced that in Galiares, no? Nga, both chemical and microscopic then, if there is flagging, no, there is flagging, uh, the the machine will just take a picture inside. No, uh, will just take a picture of the urine. Then the medtech will just choose kung unsa na siya nga klase nga urine constituents. Normal ba siya? Abnormal? Cast ba? Crystal? What kind of crystal? Calcium carbonate, etc. Alright, so much for that. So, SSA is um, not usually done in the clinical laboratory, no? Routinely, routinely. This is done in 
Fana. Ka reference labs kanang just for confirmation lang sa protein since this would measure protein no? so the function of the SSA parameter is to measure all kinds of protein other than albumin it can also measure there is globulin or even dense Jones protein that is present in the urine even in small amounts even in small amounts so if that would measure all kinds of protein then we could conclude that this is a confirmatory test for protein and then it will, it, its purpose will also prevent false negative result from the lipstick prevent false negative this is confirmatory this will measure all kinds of protein and this will prevent false negative result from the lipstick so that's the answer for that's the answer for question number four function of SSA all right, so let us review. No, let us review on how we will do the SSA manually. So um, usually, no, sa clean mic, uh, these are the first activities. No, I believe for the laboratory portion. But since uh, you haven't done face to face yet, no, so sayang. Uh, hopefully. Pohon-pohon, maka, maka sway lah untuk mo. Pohon-pohon. Alright, so let us try to review our SSA, no? SSA or sulfosalicylic acid test, which is the test for all kinds of protein. Alright, how will we do it first? Of course, we need to have the 3 ml of 3% SSA or sulfosalicylic acid that is added with 3 ml of centrifuge urine that should be centrifuged urine All right next so after it will be added then it will be mixed by inversion and so also observe for you observe for cloudiness right then if you have already observed for its cloudiness then we will have to grade the degree of the turbidity right grade the degree of the turbidity i hope you still have space here all right so how will we grade the SSA according to its turbidity or the protein content according to its turbidity so let's create a table we have here grade turbidity then you also have the protein in milligrams per dl All right so when we say negative it means no turbidity and this will measure less than 6 milligrams per dl of protein in the urine next we have the trace when we say trace it has noticeable turbidity noticeable turbidity and that will be 6 to 30 milligrams per dl of protein when we say 1 plus so by the way uh, this grading is semi quantitative no so this would not measure um, numerically exact the amount of protein but rather it will measure the just the you know, detection limits for each grading all right for 1 plus this will be distinct 
turbidity and has no granulation and the protein is 30 to 100 milligrams per deciliter next we have the 2 plus for 2 plus it has turbidity granulation but with no flocculation and the protein content is 100 to 200 milligrams per deciliter then we have 3 plus um, the characteristic is turbidity granulation and flocculation the protein content is 200 to 400 milligrams per deciliter and we have 4 plus which is the maximum no the characteristic is having clumps of protein and a protein content to be greater than 400 milligrams per deciliter so that's how we grade the turbidity for our ssa all right i hope this is clear right so that's all for our um, discussion short discussion and review for the chemical parameters using the case study so now i will briefly discuss the clinical uh, of the principle i rather principles of the chemical dipstick or the chemical parameter using the chem strip or the dipstick so other manufacturers will say chem strip other others will also call them as dipstick so kani ako i-share ninyo um nakatabulate na, na siya ako na siya gitabulate then this will be repeatedly asked during our internship especially sa atong ERT then mag rotational exam pa ta and then I think we have compre uh, right so magamit sa dinino sa MTAP no with your clinical microscopy then this will also be asked again and again in the board exams so this is very important that you will not just familiarize but rather memorize each chemical parameter its principles and its reading time seconds so if ako si i <laughs> Module number one ako ipangota na sa ERT. Dapat memorize niya tanan by heart, right? So to sum up, no, to sum up all the chemical parameters. Now we will create a table. Parameter and then principle. reading time this is in seconds right. so we will arrange them uh, in terms of its reading time from the lowest to the highest para dali siya memorize alright alright First, we have the glucose. So, the principle of glucose is double sequential enzymatic reaction. And that would be two, okay, double man, two enzymes. So, what are those two enzymes? That's your glucose oxidase and your glucose peroxidase and the reading time is 30 seconds next parameter is your bilirubin for bilirubin the principle is diazo reaction 
and the reading time is 30 seconds the same with your glucose next would be your ketones your ketones you have the principle of the sodium nitroprusside reaction and uh, reading time is 40 seconds next will be your specific gravity the principle is the PK, pka change in poly in your electrolyte pka change in electrolyte and the reading time is 45 shout out song 45 same with your ketones of 40. Ang pair sa 30 is your glucose and your bilirubin. Alright. After specific gravity will be your protein. For protein, the principle is the protein error of indicators. So, I believe that we have discussed this now earlier no so that indicator will be your hydrogen ion so this will be taken up by your protein in an acidic environment and then that indicator upon uptake will release its conjugated dye which is your which is your what blue green indicator and the time is Reading time is 60 seconds. Next parameter is your pH. pH, its principle is double indicator system. So, if you're asked what are these double indicator system, that will be your dice, such as your methyl red and your brom thymol blue and the reading time is also 60 seconds next parameter is your blood we have discussed this no earlier principle is pseudo peroxidase activity of hemoglobin and the reading time is 60 next is your nitrite for nitrite the principle is grease reaction reading time is also 60 next urobilinogen principle is Ehrlich or Ehrlich's reaction and the reading time is also 60 so pila na 60 1 2 3 4 5 so you must remember from protein pH blood nitrite nitrogen same group na na siya nga 60 seconds then lastly will be your leukocyte leukocyte then the principle is your will be your leukocyte esterase so this has the longest reading time which is 120 seconds so naka, as you have seen no, naka range siya from highest to lowest para dali siya memorize so glucose and bilirubin kalingaw na una 30 then 40-45 then, lima ka 60, and lastly will be your 120. Nga diligent malimtan, which is your leukocyte esterase. So, uh, I would recommend that you have to memorize this by heart. Sky sa um, clean method, especially with urinalysis, correlation, and chemical nga. Um, analysis mo dyan siya yung gawas especially with case studies i-correlate niya siya sa imuhang 
imuhang uh, microscopic na kuan. For example, no, uh, lipid esteres taasya if there is infection, bacterial infection. Um, if there is hepatitis, musaka im bilirubin and so on and so forth so i hope that you have learned something now for my short lecture for our rationalization of clinical microscopy case 2 which is the chemical parameters thank you so much for listening